Hi, uh, my name is Yesel. Um, I'm a PhD student at University of Washington working with Jessica Hellman. Um, this project was done when I interned at Adobe Research under the supervision of Mira Donchebe in a, uh, in a collaboration with Eitan Adar. In this project, we explored the possibility to support speech input while expert users interact with creative application. So using creative application is notoriously hard, even for experts. There are many reasons. Um, creative applications such as, such as Adobe Photoshop, Illustrator, or Microsoft PowerPoint offer a very broad set of features because design tasks often require various sets of operations. So even experts can only be able to master a certain set of them that they use often. If they want to use the rest of them, they have to find them in the piles of menu like this. Also, expert users use multiple applications to complete a uh, complex de design task. So this required them to familiarize themselves with many applications that might have a slightly different user interface. Experts also tend to use multiple input devices, like a keyboard, mouse, tablet, and pen, and touch, which cost some time and effort when they need to switch to another modality to a certain interaction, like typing while drawing with their digital pen. So to overcome these difficulties, expert users use some technique like keyboard shortcuts, macros, or interface customizations. But there are often limitations to how much efficiency this can provide. So for example, a user can only learn and program the limited number of keyboard shortcuts because it quickly becomes difficult to find new combinations that are both memorable and efficient. And also these types of uh, practice, adapting these types of pra practice to your own workflow requires time and effort as well. So given the comp complex nature of uh, expert needs and tool and technique that support that needs, expert users face to deal with uh, cognitive and physical costs in their daily task. So since they have to learn and recall and also integrate it, all this feature and technique into their workflow, it imposes some cognitive load. And they have to switch modality often. And even with the case of single input modality like digital pen, they have to travel all the way to the top to trigger an operation in the menu and have to come back to the main canvas they're mainly working on. And this imposed some physical cost for users. So in this project, we consider speech input to reduce these costs. So specifically, speech input that layered on top of the existing application and act as a vocal shortcut that will help, help expert user to trigger necessary operations. And speech input might help them to reduce the cognitive cost associated with the locating a button to trigger an operation or recalling obscure keyboard shortcut. And may reduce the physical cost as well by reducing the needs to speech input, sorry, needs to switch input modality and save lots of traverse across the screen. So we started our exploration of this possibility of supporting speech input with a set of research questions. So first we were wondering whether expert user can envision this speech inter interaction in their, working, um, their existing workflow. And if so, when is the circumstance that expert user wants to use speech input? And also, what is the most natural or efficient query to evoke on operation for expert users? Lastly, we were interested in understanding unique needs for experts user in terms of using speech interaction. So to answer this question, we conducted a series of study and built a prototype. So first we did a formative interview. We wanted to understand whether expert user were willing to use speech input or not. Um, if so, which use cases that user can envision that speech input might help. Then we start prototyping by incorporating the design goals that emerged from the formative study. And with the prototype we developed, we evaluated how expert users used the prototypes to do typical creative tasks to understand how and when speech input is being used. So to learn how experts envision to use speech input in their workflow, we recruited 10 creative experts where all participants self-identify themselves as professional artists or designers. And their experience was varied from three years to 15 years. And of, on average, they were using four different creative applications. In each session, we first asked their professional history and a couple of projects they were working on. We also prompt them to think about opportunity for speech input in the context of their current projects. And we also discussed specific situations where they envision to issue a speech command and broadly discuss some strategy they're using to be more efficient. Here are a few examples of use cases. So some experts like to speech support, especially when they're using brush. 
So since drawing with brush required them to focus on the main canvas that often located in the center of the application, and currently they have to move focus to find a specific brush they're looking for among many other listed brush. So some experts envision to use a speech input, change uh, brush tip by simply saying the name of the brush or change the parameter like size or, or opacity while being focused on the main drawing task they're working on. Some experts mention about uh, using color library. So often experts use, use work with a specific color palette. Instead of setting a color by searching through swatches or entering RGB value, they can envision using speech input to evoke preset color, like simply saying marketing blue. We have a few more interesting findings and then you can find that in our paper. So using use cases and constraint implied by the uh, expert user's feedback, we motivate a design goal, goal for our prototype. So first, speech input should be implemented in a way that allow the expert to minimize disruption of their creative flow because that's their main concern. Second, since speech input should support the flexible design configuration that experts are using as they tend to use multiple devices. Finally, speech input should enable the users customize the command, for example, to handle the custom assets or preset colors or macro and so on. So keep that design goal in mind, we built a prototype called Voice Cuts. Voice Cuts is a speech input layer that supports vocal shortcut functionality on top of the creative application Adobe Photoshop. So first we categorized operations supported by Photoshop. We identified three major operations that can be used as a basic unit of a design task, um, which is activating tool or feature or setting tool parameters and selecting document objects such as layer or groups in Photoshop. Um, and a typical design task consists of one or more operations that are listed here. And our strategy for building the prototype can be summarized as these three points, which is voice cuts will support a short phrase speech query as expert wants to minimize the disruption of flow. For a similar purpose, voice cut will execute the top ranked operation even when there's some uncertainty in their speech query instead of asking user to disambiguate their intention. And voice cuts will provide customized interface so that user can integrate their personal needs. So I'll briefly show you how voice cut works. So imagine this user is working on the Sky logo file and she wanted to add a little illustration to this logo. To do this, she needs to change the brush tool and set the brush tip and size. The first user can trigger the speech panel either by clicking a button in their tablet or using a keyboard shortcut. So once the speech panel is triggered, voice cut is listening to what the user says. So once the user, um, once the user issues the speech query, in this case, uh, Azilia brush size 10, then voice cut will execute the first string result, uh, which is change the brush tool and set the brush tip to Azalea and set the size of the brush as 10. Then the user can look at the history of speech interaction in this uh, history panel, and the user can customize their query by clicking the edit button if she wants to shorten the query to trigger the same set of operation. So here is how voice cut inter interpret the user speech query. So first, the user speech input is converted to the text uh, speech to sorry, converted to text using Google Speech to Text API. Then our interpreter first tokenizes the sentence. Um, for three types of operation that we identified, which was activating tool, setting the parameter of the tool, and selecting the document object, we built three detectors that detects each operation. And all three detectors return the information of whether the operation was fully or partially matched with the list we collected um, as a tool or parameter and document object. And also we return the word that their detection was based on and the index of the word. And after all detectors return the result, now it's time to prioritize detected operation. First, full match operation will be preferred over partial match. And also we prioritize parameter setting operation the most, followed by full tool operation and then document object operation. When execu and execution engine will execute identified operation. So we believe that this approach of having multiple detector working in a parallel manner, then prioritize the results based on some, based on some domain knowledge can be generalizable across many creative applications. And for an application that has operation category other than these three, our, our approach can be extended with additional detectors. So our architecture has some limitations. So Google speech to text API is not suitable for a short phrase. So they're optimized for longer and more conversational dialogue. So converting short phrase performed less accurately. 
Next, we rely on the Photoshop execution API, so voice cuts capability to execute certain function has bounded by this capability of internal uh, API. Lastly, we didn't incorporate any user models to resolve when there are disambiguations. So for example, if we know that the user prefers a certain tool over another, we can prioritize that preferred tool to be executed based on our understanding of users. So using voice cuts, we ran a lab study and case study to understand the circumstance of speech input being used. To gather some feedback on viability and limitation of voice cuts, we recruited eight experts for lab study. Then we asked them to complete a design task, which consists of editing an image and then adding uh, illustration to that image. And each session lasts from one to one and a half hours. And after the task, we asked them questions such as, how do you think the speech input affect the flow of your work? How, what was the biggest frustration? And what did you think about the biggest win for using speech input in your session? So we found that expert user used speech input in these circumstances. So first we, so some participants use speech input as a fast search. So this participants fell faster to search by speech than navigating the interface when this participant wants to check an operation that she doesn't use often. And participants use speech to organize document object hierarchy. So they're using it not only because it's faster, but the verbalizing the command actually helped them to think through the structure of the complex hierarchy. So one participant says that by verbalizing the speech command, I can make sure that the structure is that what I want. And participants use the speech when they try to explore design alternative. So for example, one participant says that instead of having to go through these hoop, I can just say brighter. And my eyes never leave my work so that I can just focus on that and then see how it look. And it was somewhat surprising to us because this approach might not be the fastest way because the user should keep saying a command and adjust a little by little. But there is a benefit the user can keep focusing on and looking at the canvas to test out different design alternatives to find out, let's say, a perfect size for brush, for example. Please check more finding in our paper. And we observe a few more things. Uh, participants tended to provide full phrase to specify tool or layer, even when it's not necessary. So for example, voice cuts can trigger brush tool when the user just say brush or burn to trigger burn tool, but participants use a full phrase. So they said previous experience with other voice assistant application like Alexa or Siri, they felt they should specify the command to be understood by voice cut. And another observation was no one had used our customization function, but in our follow-up interview, all participants said that they would use it assuming longer term use. And they provide a few examples how they customize the interaction and all focused on shortening the commands. So given this feedback, we would like to deploy voice cuts in a real world scenario where people can use it in the context of their own environment. So we deploy voice cuts with one professional designer at a large software company and collect his feedback. And right image show uh, his work setting uh, has a one Wacom tablet alongside keyboard and mouse and extra monitor. So overall, the designer's feedback was positive. He found the value in vocal shortcut approach and felt that vocal voice cuts saved his, him some time. And we analyzed his speech history and he made total 58 unique commands and the voice cuts took action on 33 of them. And the designer has a few suggestions for improvement, most significantly around response time of voice cuts and the accuracy of speech to text uh, functionality. And he mentioned it, it would be nice to add text entry by just seeing it. So in the future system, we can improve response time and accuracy of speech to text by having local engine to convert it instead of having a cloud API. And also we can provide a set of short phrase that often being used in the Photoshop as a hint so that the engine can prioritize those short words to improve accuracy. In voice cuts, the user should trigger the speech panel to start issuing a speech command. Um, in our, contrast to our expectation, all participants but one wanted a speech system that was always listening instead of uh, trigger-based listening. So they described that they're op often being in the quiet and private working environment and found triggering speech input by pushing the button a bit distracting. So important future work will be investigated what is the effect of different listening mechanism and also identify which one is the best for creative application context. 
And voice cut intentionally designed to execute the top ranked operation to reduce some destruction. But what if the operation was not the one that the user intended? So they had to revoke the operation and issue it again. Um, the important future work will explore the right cost model so that we can know when to execute and when not to based on some cost utility analysis. And some of our participants actually want to use speech input for some background tasks um, outside of creative applications. So for example, one participant said that it would be nicer to manipulate music player or change to a different radio station or look up a quick tutorial with speech uh, will be benefit to keep him in a flow. And another participant mentioned that he wanted to interact with a speech-enabled creative application when he is collaborating with other, uh, with other people to minimize the disruption of using keyboard and mouse in the setting. Right. So thank you. We have time for a few questions. Thank you for the great work. Dong Uk Yoon from UBC. Um, I wonder if you have observed a cases where the users want to use multimodal input on top of speech using pen or other keyboard input as a supplement. I think, for example, in cases where after I say brush size 10, maybe I want to see the size panel and they want to dynamically adjust it using my muscle or uh, maybe an error recovery mechanism. So you're saying, um, do we observe any other uses, usage where participants use multi-model, like, uh, like any other need, modalities? need for multi-model. Oh, needs for other multi-model. Um, for our scope of research, we haven't specifically looked for that aspect of it, but I'm sure that there will be. <laughs> and um, I think that's the area of future work. Hi, um, very cool talk. I'm wondering if you saw any difference in how the users were responding based on their experience with Photoshop. Maybe beginners liked it better or experts found it either way. So you're saying um, the participants gets better as the session progress? Uh, no, sorry. Uh, if the user is already really good at Photoshop, do they still find value in this? Or oh yeah, so the, we, our target user was experts, so all of our participants have some experience with Photoshop and then we specifically recruited uh, someone who has experience with Photoshop and then we had a multiple criteria to filter out um, who should we recruit it. And did you do that because you thought beginners would not benefit from this or what impact might this have on beginners to Photoshop? Oh. Well, like our approach is specifically designed to expert because we have a certain assumptions to build on this project, which is uh, experts knows what to say. They at least know the keyword um, so that they can um, just saying it and then we can uh, match those results with what we have. So um, probably there will be, novice will be, um, will need more information than just shortcut approach. But probably some of the approach that we take, like uh, architecture-wise or other user experience, will apply to novice usage as well. Thank you. Hello. <clears throat> hey. Excuse me. Hey, hey. Uh, uh, Chi from University of Notre Dame. Uh, very interesting work. Uh, I'm wondering, so last year I remember Adobe released the uh, voice control of Adobe Photoshop and Bridge, other software. I'm wondering uh, what's the improvement compared to the company's previous release to work. Have you considered that? Do well, you uh, like, collect the user needs from the experiments? Sure. Like um, I don't. I. I'm not aware of what the product you t you're talking about, but what we can definitely talk after this talk. Um, yeah. Sure. Thanks. Let's thank the speaker.